is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I said today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible says there's two times when we should bless the Lord. Amen. When things are not going good and when things are going good. Amen. But it says it this way. It says I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise will continuously be in my mouth. Amen. That means when things are going good, you bless them. And when things are not going so good, you bless them. Amen. Aren't we glad and just glad and thankful that God has blessed us to see this brand new year? Amen. And you know, 2015 was a good year. 2015 was a good year. Amen. Because 2015 for the believer, it showed us. It showed us, if it didn't show us anything, it showed us the great strategies of the devil. If 2015 did nothing, it showed us that the playbook that we're using as believers is different than the playbook that the devil's using. And we better change our playbook. We better change our playbook. Because he ain't playing. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta use the playbook of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. You know, generally when two teams, and just reference to football, when two teams are are well prepared on whatever plan they have, it's usually the coach's fault when a team don't do so well. Because the playbook that the coach put together is not enough to stop the um, his opponent, yeah. and um, and so when you see scores just go crazy, it's generally not the players, it's the coach. And you notice whenever they fire somebody, they don't fire the players, they fire the coach, because it's generally the problem. The problem is generally with the coach and the playbook. Well, we got to change our playbook in 2016. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And the, and the thing about it is this, Jesus has already, God has already given us everything we need Amen. to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. The strategy of the devil. Amen. The Bible's already shared with us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of this world, darkness, amen, in heavenly places. Amen. So we know who our enemy is and we know what he's all about. Yes, sir. Amen. But this year, our enemy got to know what we all about. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 What, what we're all about. Um, we had a wonderful watch night service here, didn't we? Amen. The sons and the daughters of the house did just a wonderful job. Amen. Just recapping the year of 2015, and um, and we just we were just here uh, on our knees. Amen. Leading into 2016, just a wonderful time. We went home that morning about. 7.30, I got a call from the uh, fire department of steel service, a chaplain for the street for fire department. They called and told me, uh, asked me if I would respond to a scene to a wooded area. So that morning, um, January 1st, I was at a, in a wooded area where an 18-year-old uh, boy had taken his life. Amen. One of the sons of one of our firefighters. Wow. So our captain's son got up that morning and 18 years old, still in high school. And he took his life. Whatever was going on in his little young life, he felt that it couldn't, he had no help. He couldn't give any help. And I talked to his father that morning. And you know, when you're comforting somebody, when you want to provide comfort, you just want to know if that person knew the Lord. Yeah. And his son didn't know the Lord. It tells me that we got to do a better job for yes, I'm, I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about the believer. Amen. Amen. We have got to be about our father's business. The devil is going to continue to do his business. He's not giving up. He's not letting go. His objective is to destroy the Bible in John 
10, 10 said the thief comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you would have life. And that you would have life more abundant. Amen. I prayed for a couple of months about uh, the radio broadcast. You know, Have Faith in God radio broadcast. We started two years ago, January 14th, actually, of 2014. And I'm ending it January 15th of 2016. This is the 15th of this month. will be my last day broadcasting. And um, I prayed about it because it's been a tug in my spirit. And you know, whenever you feel a distant tug in your spirit, God is telling you something. Yeah. And I'm always guilty of trying to find my own reason why God wants me to stop doing something or why God's leading me in a different direction. And it's generally not uh, your own natural reason. It's because God wants you to focus on something different. Yeah. And I knew what I knew that you know the broadcast has been just a blessing, and, and we did everything that God assigned us to do on that radio oh, broadcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We built faith, amen. Let's go. We built faith, and and we we encourage people on a radio station that that a hundred percent probably the people that listen to a gospel station are people who are saved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can't win a whole lot of souls on that station. Right. 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 Amen. 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 It's just like a woman. She can be nine weeks pregnant or nine months pregnant. She's pregnant. Amen. She ain't a little pregnant. She's pregnant. At nine weeks, she as pregnant at nine weeks as she is at nine months. So people are saved. And our goal for those two years was to build their faith. Build their faith, increase their faith in God. But you can't win souls increasing faith. Increasing faith is not the Great Commission. Winning souls, saving souls. That's the Great Commission. It's easier to build faith than it is to win souls. Amen. But a person that got little faith that know Jesus will make it into heaven. Oh yeah. Person, I got a lot of faith that knows Jesus is gonna make it in the heaven. But the person that don't knows Jesus not at all will not make it. So our commission and our assignment for 2016, and I've been t telling my leaders and been sharing with you that we are we've got to prepare warriors to be able to win souls Amen. and to do the work of the kingdom. Amen. I want to teach you today on the endowment of power from on high. Amen. Endowment of power from on high. In the book of Luke, 24 chapters, 49 verses, it says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Jesus is talking to his disciples. He said, Wait in the city of Jerusalem until you've been endued with power from on high. You've been with me. You've been walking with me. You have a personal relationship with me. You have witnessed the healings. You have witnessed the miraculous things that I've done. But that's, that's different than what you are about to receive now. Your personal relationship with Jesus has very little to do with receiving the power from on high. Your personal relationship with Jesus is intact. The disciples had a relationship with Jesus. They knew Jesus. They had been with Jesus. They had walked with Jesus. They had eaten with Jesus. They had slept with Jesus. They had seen Jesus do miraculous things, all sorts of miracles. They witnessed Jesus do. But now Jesus is telling them, listen, I'm about to go. And there's other work that you've got to do. And the work that you've got to do now is the exact same work that I've done with you. It's the winning of souls. But you can't do it. You can't do it until you have the power from on high. So go to Jerusalem and wait there, tarry there, until you receive the power. In a few days, it's going to come. Wait there. I didn't give you this, Pastor Cord, but go to Matthew 18, 18, and 24. He told them to wait. And what Jesus was saying to them 
is the exact same thing he is saying to you and he's saying to me. The reason Jesus told them to wait because they had a relationship with him. To Terry, they had a relationship with him. You have a relationship with Jesus. And Jesus is saying to us the exact same thing. He is saying, wait. Wait for the power. On high. There's power from on high that, that will come into you, that will, that will guide you to have a successful Christian life. A successful Christian life is not just us living and knowing Jesus. A successful Christian life is Jesus being able to use us, Amen. employ us Amen. to win souls. Yes. Amen. Amen. Everything that you can tell people, everything that you can share with people about, uh, about uh, your, your testimony, about how God has done this and done that for you, that's all good and dandy. And that stuff is wonderful. It's wonderful to be able to share your testimony. But nothing, nothing is above winning a soul. Amen. Nothing is greater than bringing a person who's in darkness from darkness to light. That is the great commission for every blood-bought believer, every person who is seated here that have a relationship with Jesus, the assignment that God has given us to win souls. Amen. Your assignment is not to usher, to greet, or to sing in a choir. Amen. My assignment is not to stand up here and preach. Our assignment is to win souls for God. Amen. 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 It says, Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Make sure I gave you the right. I'm sorry, 28. Matthew 28, 18 and 20. So, so our assignment that God has given us, and sometimes we feel like we're doing such a good job being a Christian. We feel like we're doing, we're, we're just right in the zone, and everything is wonderful. I looked at our year last year, we baptized people last year. When I looked at the number of people we baptized that didn't know Jesus, it's good to have a baptism. But baptism, really for people who come from darkness to light. A lot of us were baptized. I got baptized the second time because I was baptized at such a young age that I wanted to be baptized again. And that's understandable. But when we look at people that we baptized that didn't know Jesus, we do a good job of bringing people to the Lord? Did we, did we do a good job at, at winning souls for the kingdom of God? And if we did, then why? And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go. Say go. 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 Tell your neighbor, say go. go. Man, this, we got to go. Just go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It says go. He's talking to each and every one of us to go, to go, to go. You, we have a personal relationship with Jesus. We've given Jesus our life. We've given him our soul. Now he wants to employ your soul to go. He wants to employ our soul to go. We got to find out why our soul's not going. Mm -hmm. And 20 says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Also, brother, go to John 7, 38, 39 for me. He says, he, he says, I am with you. He says, go therefore. Go therefore. Go. Now, remember... He told the disciples, he said, now, listen, go and tarry for a little while. And then you're going to be endued with the power from on high. Because right now, you're not ready for the power. Right now, you're not ready for it. You've you got to go somewhere, and you've got to pray and consecrate yourself unto me. 
You got to sit somewhere and, and understand what this great commission is all about. You got to go somewhere and, and identify, are you really willing to let go of everything to follow me? Are you really, are you willing to really just let go of your life and allow my life to be your life? So before you have the, uh, the before the power can come in, you've got to go somewhere and tarry. And, and pray. See, when the disciples were tearing, they were somewhere all together. Locked up, closed up, praying. Now imagine if one of the disciples said, now listen, I got to go and take care of some business. Y'all stay here, I'll be right back. He would not have been counted worthy to receive the power from on high. Imagine that. If one of the 11 disciples said, listen, I got some stuff I got to take care of at home. I got some things I've got to go and deal with with my children. Y'all stay here. Let me know what happened. Call me when the power comes. I'll come back and we'll get on about the Savior's business. No, we would say, and even the Holy Spirit and Jesus said, he's not worthy because his mind not on the things of the Lord. Sometimes, it doesn't take away his salvation. It doesn't take away his personal relationship with God. It simply means his soul is not prepared to do the work for the Lord. He, he's not equipped, he's not, he's not, he hasn't yielded his life over to God. And so, we see the churches today that are not filled. When you ever, you ever think about why aren't we able to win souls for the Lord? Why are we, you know, for the most part, churches, all of us, all denominations, we're just flipping members. Yeah. yeah. Amen. 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 I'm thinking about moving my membership from the Plex to Planet uh, Fitness because they just put one over closer, you know, over on 70th Street, close to where I travel at. And I'm thinking about moving my membership from one gym to the other gym. Amen. They got the same kind of weights. It's newer. It looks good. I'm sure it smells better. And I'm, I'm probably going to like it better because it's got some new stuff in there. And that's what we do as church members. Oh, there's a new church over there. They just built a family life center. Amen. Let's go see what's going on over there. And move our membership from one place to the other. And that's what we're seeing in church. We're not seeing any new growth. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. We're not seeing any, 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 any new people come. We're just seeing people coming from other places. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. That's never, that was never the plan of, of, of the kingdom. That was never the plan of God. His plan was that the church would be at, that he would be able to add to the church daily. Right. But God cannot add to the church daily if we're not endued with power from on high. Yeah. Yeah. It says, he that believeth on me, and as the scriptures have said, out of his belly, say out of my belly, out of my belly. shall flow rivers of living water. Those of us that believe on him, yes. that means believe on his word. Believe on what he has said. Amen. Amen. Out of our bellies, out of our hearts will flow rivers of living water. Do you know this means that there's, there should be a burning on the inside of us? Amen. A burning for souls. Amen. A burning for people to be saved. Amen. Jesus had a burning on the inside of him. Amen. He had to have that in order for him to come and die for our sins. <laughs> In order for him to leave heaven, his place of comfort, and come down to this world and wrap himself in humanity, go to the cross, die on the cross, be beaten, have a crown of thorns upon his head, side pierced with a spear. I mean, Jesus had to have loved us. Amen. 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 And had a burning for us. Amen. To be saved. Amen. We have to have that same burning. Amen. I'm not talking about your salvation. I'm not talking about your personal relationship with Jesus. I'm not talking about you giving your hand to the preacher and you ushering and greeting and coming to church and paying your tithes. All that stuff is good and dandy. 
But if your soul is not employed by God, Amen. if your life is not employed by God, if, 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 if soul winning is not the main thing in our life, I'm telling you, we all missing it. Amen. Listen, pastor missing it. And, it, and, it, and it, it's something that has to make us feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta feel uncomfortable. And this is not a message where even I can look at you or you can look at me or you can look at your neighbor. This is a message where we gotta look at ourselves. Right. Right. Ain't, no, you, ain't nobody judging nobody here. Cause nobody here can stand up and say, let me tell you about all the souls I brought to Jesus. Yeah. And we say, well, people are different today than they were years ago. The world is different today. That's the reason souls are not being saved. That's the reason we see all this horrific stuff going on in our world. No, it's not that. It's just that we don't have the power. Yes, Amen. 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 We got the word. The disciples knew the word. The disciples knew Jesus. And Jesus didn't say, listen, y'all watch me do everything. You've seen everything. I've taught you all this time, this three and a half years I've been here. You've watched me. I've taught you. Now go and do what you got to do. Amen. Go and do what you've seen me do. No, he didn't say that. He said, listen, you've been watching me. You've seen me do this, but wait and tarry here right. for the power. Because you're going to need some power. Amen. It's going to take some power to win souls. You can't, you can't win souls because you talk good. You, you can't win souls because people like you. No. Hallelujah. It says, but this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. There's a spirit, there's a power that those of us who believe on him Receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. See, Jesus said, "There's the power from on high will come up on you." Yeah, the power from on high. There's power. There's power from on high that will come up on you. And on the day of Pentecost in Acts two and fourteen, and you can read the whole thing, but I'm just going to read fourteen through eighteen. It says, "But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to the men of Judah." Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. <clears throat> so they're not drunk. The people were, were speaking in other tongues. They were speaking in languages. People from all over could hear their own language. People from all over was in this mist and they could hear other people speaking their language and they were able to understand it. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Job. And it shall come to pass in the last day, say God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. On, on what? On all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Your old men shall dream dreams. It was all spoken of prophetically spoken of by Job. Amen. And it shall come. Amen. 18 says, and on my, on, on my men servant and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. That's talking to you and me. You and me. That's talking to us. His spirit, he said, in those, it's this day. It is this day that he is speaking of that his spirit is to be poured out upon us. Pour it out upon us. Amen. And, and, and when, it's, when, when it's poured out, we're going to speak his words. And down in Acts um, 2 and... What did I get? Acts 2 and, uh, let's see, 30, 36 through 40, 36 through 42. Amen. Come on, let's say amen. Amen. Now, now remember, remember this is Peter, the same Peter that had a relationship with Jesus. The same Peter that denied Jesus. This, that's the same Peter. Now, this same Peter that denied him, who we didn't hear from after he denied him until the resurrection of Jesus, when he ran and looked into the tomb, we didn't hear from Peter. But now, 
Peter is standing and preaching on the day of Pentecost. He's able to do that because he's filled with power from on high. When, when you are filled with the power from on high, it's going to change your life. It's going to bring about just see when we see people, you know, and we good, we good about seeing people in the in the in the Pentecostal church dancing and shouting and moving and this and that. We say, oh, she caught her, he caught the Holy Ghost. <laughs> what kind of power is that? What what is that? Who who, who did that bring to the Lord? That's for self. That's for you. That's right. That's right. Who did that encourage? I ain't talking against it. People speaking in tongues. Oh, she got the Holy Ghost. I speak in tongues. I prayed in tongues when I was standing right here. Before service, uh, before I came up here. But the tongues that they were speaking in were helping each other. Had they been speaking in a language that nobody understood, wouldn't help nobody. God knew what they needed when they needed it because the first thing that God did when the Holy Spirit came in, he won souls. Amen. There were no miracles performed there. There was no healings performed there. There, there was no blind eyes opening. I'm sure somebody there was blind. I'm sure somebody there was crippled, but he didn't heal anybody crippled. He didn't open up any blind eyes. It doesn't say that on the day of Pentecost. He won souls. Amen. He won souls. We see of the miracles and we hear of the miracles after the day of Pentecost. But not on the day of Pentecost. We hear tongues, and because it's a gift, speaking in tongues, speaking in un unknown language, it is a gift. Yes. But it's a personal gift. It's a self-gift. And when the Holy Spirit, when the power of more high come upon us, it, it, it brings about a life of a believer that causes us not to be selfish. That causes us to be meek. That causes us to be, if you want to be able to bear your cross, if you want to be able to bear the cross that's upon you right now, you've got to be endued with the power from on high. Amen. 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 Because the power from on high, it causes everything that's hindering you from allowing your soul to be yielded to God. It causes every excuse to be erased. Amen. 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 Some of us so busy with the cares of life. So busy with your life. So busy trying to please yourself. Education. Nothing wrong with education. Only when it elevates above soul winning. Nothing wrong with taking care of your children, taking care of your family. I've got a family. I've got a wife. And I, I, and I say, I see sometime in my own life how my family, how my family responsibilities pull me away from wanting and, and doing the things I should be doing for the Lord. All right, Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When them brothers was tearing and, and a lot of y'all say, well, Pastor, you shouldn't let that happen because a lot of y'all say it's the pastor's responsibility to win souls. No, <laughs> uh, no it's every believer's responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If your family, the reason we don't have the power, if your family, if your job, if your career, if your hunger and thirst for our financial status elevates above. If it's, a, if, it has, if it's a part of your life, you'll never receive the power. Amen. If your goal in life is to please your spouse, huh? 
And, and that's above pleasing God. You'll never on, be in good Come on, Pastor. Amen. If your goal in life, my goal in life is to, I got a bucket list, and I want to accomplish all these things in my life, I'll never be in do with power from on high. Amen. You like the disciple that says to the other disciples, hey, y'all tell me what happened. I got to go take care of this over here. Y'all let me know what's going on. I'm busy. I've got to do this. And then we're so crazy, we say God understands. <laughs> he do. He understands that our heart is not towards him. He understands that we don't understand. We don't understand what the Great Commission is all about. We don't understand that his greatest desire, his greatest want is for souls to be saved. That's right. We can't do it without the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. Can't win nobody. Amen. You can't, your words cannot restrain a person's attention, cannot grab a person. Our words cannot grab people. Amen. But when we're filled with the Holy Ghost, when Peter preached on that day, his words grabbed 3,000 people. Was it Peter? No. It was the power from on high. It was the power from on high. The power from on high. It was the power of the Holy Ghost. It was the rivers of living water that was flowing on the inside of him. Amen. The Holy Spirit that was flowing. Hallelujah. Man, it's so easy in this life.